What up, Accelerate? So today, we wanted to try something for you. Willie is always harping that I take too long to get ready. And if he had to do makeup, then he could do it quicker and better and blah, 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 blah. So he is going to be my hands <laughs> to get me ready to film today. So we're going to walk through putting on my makeup. So usually the first thing I do is pull my hair up out of my face. Usually I try to get the hair out of my face. All out of my face. All right. I love it. So out of my face. So then I start usually with moisturizer, but I seem to have forgotten it. So we're going to start with some foundation, some liquid foundation. And so I'm just going to grab that real quick. Now, but I'm gonna grab it on the other side real quick. Yep, it's in a, it's in a glass bottle. Ugh, right there. Perfect. So usually I just either squirt some on my hand and dab it all over my face. And rub it all in and make sure it's super even. Even. Uh, yeah, just like a little bit more right there. Yeah. And I rub it all across my nose. Yeah. Do you need to blow your nose? No. I feel disgusting. It's just I've got lots of coverage on my nose. Especially on the left side. It's just lots of coverage. Yeah, right there. So once I make sure that my foundation is all rubbed in and I didn't put too much on, I... Uh, that's how it didn't look good. Yeah, now I move on to like a, a powder and I put powder over the liquid to kind of take the shine off of it. And so, yeah, that I use that brush sometimes to finish things up, um, but I can use it to blend everything together. And then I get my Mary Kay powder. Nope, that's what I use for blush, so it'll make everything pink. I like the other one too. Yeah, the will work. Um, so yeah, just unscrew the lid and I use my liquid first. Now I'm moving on to my powder. And so I just brush that all over my face to make sure that all the shine is under control. I just blend everything nice and good. Keep your hair out of your face. You got a lot right there. You gotta get up under, blend it all in. So once that's all blended and all the shine is away, then I put on a little blush on my cheekbones. I you gotta push the button on the end. Freaking button. There. there you go. That's plenty. Just a little dab will do ya. Both sides? Both sides. I get it not in my mouth. Keep your mouth shut. The cheekbones, not nose. Maybe I should have had Ellie help. Okay. I <laughs> think not jawbone, cheekbone. Okay. So now it's, <sighs> now I do my eyes. So I'm gonna start with some eyeshadow. So I use the little skinny brushes for my eyeshadow. I put on my mascara last, but it's, I mean, I guess that's a personal preference. Yeah, and so I have kind Is there of a- a button on this one too? No. So I use the lighter colors up on top and then the brighter colors on my lid and try to So 
sometimes I find it better not even to look, and then it's just a surprise at the end. Am I blending right? Yeah. Is it blending in that eye? It's doing something. You gotta get more green in there. And then we flush it out with a nice tone. Or cream, whatever that's called. Skin tone. <laughs> that's your skin tone you got problems. It's a... Oh, 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 oh. How's your eye feel? It's great. Good. Can I go more where that came from? Going back to this side. Hello. Back to green. And then flush it out with the skin tone. Go. Okay. Okay. So after that's on, then I usually go over my eyeliner. So I use liquid eyeliner. I like it better. And so I use the liquid eyeliner next. I'm going to cat eye this. <laughs> Good. Uh, it feels great. I'm feeling beautiful. Oh, switch hands. It's the only way I'm going to get this. Usually so. switch. But I guess, again, that's kind of a personal preference. I usually try to keep it up along my lash line. Yeah, that's what I tried. You look fantastic. Mm -hmm. What now? Um, well, now I usually curl my eyelashes. You, why'd your hair come down? I don't know. Curl your lashes? Yeah, curl my lashes. I ain't got no curling on. Yeah, it's there on the table. This one? No, nope. nope, that's the be. That's the beginning. Nope, just use that. Keep reaching. Keep reaching. Keep reaching. Okay. This is a torture device. Watch. Hold your nose still. <laughs> it's, it's from eyelashes. I, I, and this is like not... <laughs> you know, when it's a casual day, you don't necessarily have to curl your eyelashes. You can just totally skip this step and go straight to mascara. <laughs> so, like, I, I'm feeling kind of chill today. I wasn't expecting you to go at my eye like a piranha. So, we agreed that today is going to be a little more casual and we're not curling my eyelashes. Um, we're just going to move right on to the mascara step. So, which one's. What's this do? What do I do with this? Oh, I put mascara on my eyelashes and do my very, very best to not get it in my eyeball because it burns really, really bad if you get it in your eyeballs. Uh, I need you to turn your head this way. Oh, very good. Hey, quit blinking. Quit blinking. Eyelashes, not eyebrows. Quit blinking. Okay, let's go to the other side. Quit blinking! I can't see. If you blink again, you're gonna make me mess up this whole masterpiece. Turn your head! Torp! I'm sorry. This way. This is why you put your hair up before you start all of this. I did put it up. So that you don't get mascara in your... What now? Now I put on lipstick and top it off with lip gloss. So I actually buy like a lip tint. And so I put it on and oh as God. soon as it dries, then I put on the gloss on top of it so it comes together. Um, this is kind of a darker shade. Her. Top lip. Quit. What are you, a fish? You're not supposed to see. Really? Remember, you're so good. You can do this blindfolded and get ready quicker than I do. Now, pucker it like a fish. I got makeup on my hands. 
How do you get this one off? So then once it starts drying, then you put the gloss on top of it and it locks in your color all day. Lock that color. Yeah, locked for life. Kind of like me with you, babe. That's easier to do it this way. Mm, yeah. Now what? Um, so that's, that's how I... What was this for? Oh, well, I used this, that. Yeah, I just kind of blend it all together. Um, Okay. So that's my finished finished makeup. So if Willie had to do makeup every day and get out of the house, he could do it quicker than me and look like this. Look lovely. Okay, this is really good, guys. Let me go get a mirror so that you can see how good Willie did. My eyes are burning. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> you look like a well, clown. Yeah. Hey, it's J Joker 2.0. Uh, before we got started, but... I think it looked pretty good. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm an artist, uh, and you were, like, like, painting like Picasso. Picasso, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're so glad that you guys are joining us tonight. We are in week three of our declaration series. Um, what are you declaring um, in, your life? in your life? Yeah. In your life. To yeah. others, what are you declaring as your... Is your anthem, <laughs> anthem of life. Uh, what are you allowing to speak into yourself and so on and so forth? Yeah, and what I are you representing it. to other people? And so today, the title of this message is going to be Impact. So we want to talk to you a little bit about the impact that you're making on others and how that affects them and their walk with Christ and what yeah. impact do you want to be making and leaving on other people. And so, yeah. and what impacts on your life? Right. Like, what is truly impacting you? Uh, to impact others. Right. So, and the very first point that we have is your influence makes an impact. Now, you hear all the time that, that you're an influence on people or, or man, you're an influencer. Um, but that phrase, we say it so flippantly. Right. But it's so true. You truly are an influ influencer um, in everything that you do. You're an influencer, whether you're chilling with friends, uh, just hanging out, whether you're right. here at church, whether you're, man, doing FaceTime with your friends, you're influencing your friends, you're influencing your family in some way. And, uh, and the people that you're around are influencing you, even if you don't realize it. Absolutely. Um, so when you're an influencer, which you are, because you're breathing. Um, yeah. <laughs> you are breathing. Therefore, you are an influencer. And so when you're an influencer, um, what you decide to make priority in your life becomes what you start impacting on other people's right. life, the influence you have on other people's life. And so when you allow um, sports, you allow um, music, you allow, you name it, to be the main thing in your life, what other people get from you is that thing. But when you decide to, to, to use your ability as an influencer right. to make God number one in your life, therefore standing up and saying, you know what, God is the one true God, and that's the one that I serve, and that's the thing that's, that's most important to me. When you stand up, you speak, speak up, and you start living it out, that's truly when you when you become the influencer that God's created you to do. Uh, and so we talk about that, man, we're making a declaration with this series. Um, what better way than to declare that God's number one in your life right. and then use that declaration to mobilize every bit of influence that you have. And therefore, when you do that, you make everybody memorize the story of of what God has done in your life. You you make everyone memorize the words that you you have learned through reading the word of God. Now you don't have to walk up and say, Do you know my story? Do you do you No, it's it's by the way you talk, it's the by by the way you act, by the way uh, you respond respond to a situation. Yeah. Sorry, that's I how say that word. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you stand up, that's how you speak up and that's how you live it loud. Right. And so, I mean, when you're making those declarations, 
and really like just making sure that people know who you are and what you stand for and really representing Christ as you do that. Um, so our second point is greatness was meant for you. We all have different stories. We all have different backgrounds. God brings us all through different challenges and different seasons. And so it's important to realize that just because your story looks different than somebody else's doesn't mean that they're meant for greatness and you're not. It yeah. means that you're going to be good. able to use your story to connect with other people. Yeah that they may not be able to reach. And that's why God's called us. I mean, we talked a couple weeks ago about us all being part of one body. But you know what? God brings different walks of life, different paths, different seasons and situations. And he brings people through those things so that we can connect and impact with each other. And so greatness was meant for you. And how you walk out that greatness and what God's called you to do is going to take um, getting close enough to God that you can hear his voice and really know what he's calling you to do next and who he's calling you yeah. to impact with your declaration instead of just um, surviving a and situation. I love the fact, man, greatness is in your DNA. When 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 God created you, mm -hmm. he, call, he called you out to be great. Now, whether you decide to allow that greatness to, to flow out that's up to you. We talk about the decision every single week because that's truly what the walk of Jesus is. Right. It's a decision to wake up every day and live the, the way that Christ has, has deemed us to live or has asked us to leave, live to follow Christ with all of our heart. It's a decision every single day. It talks about picking up our cross every single day. Right. So greatness, you were meant for greatness. You were meant to be an influencer, but it's a decision that you have to make. It's built into your DNA but here's the thing. I can play drums. I, I've been able to play drums uh, for, a, for a long time. But if I never pick up a drum, a drumstick, if I never pick up a drum, if I never do that, what's going to happen is simple. I'm going to lose or I'm just going to have to pick it up and try harder and try harder and try harder. I'm going to have to practice that. Greatness in you is there. Now you you're gonna have to practice that, right. and you you're gonna have to make it a, a point, a to priority hit it. in your life to make sure that you're yeah. doing everything that you can to do what God's called you to do. And so taking all you know, spending that quiet time with God, spending time in worship, really leaning Just in with God, and, and finding yeah. out like what do you want me to do, not what I what you want her to do, or should I tell my story this way or that way? God's God's going to use your story, and He's going to pull that greatness out of you the more that you lean on Him and yeah. trust Him in those situations, and really like let your words be God's words, like hear His heartbeat, love people, yeah. and and really use your. Um, Use your story not to say, like, hey, I'm better. If I can do it, you can do it because I just sucked it up and, and made it through. Yeah. No, God brings us through things, and he brings people into our lives during those seasons to help us overcome things. And so we have to make sure that when we are in that spot where we are the person that's declaring life over somebody else's situation, that we're there to encourage them. And that's why it's important to stay connected. So that when you need somebody, you've got somebody there. But there's going to be a point in your walk where, you know, God's going to be saying, hey, I'm ready for you to step out and I'm ready for you yeah. to share your story because they need to hear that I can bring somebody through this, that this is not the end. This is yeah. part of their story. This is part of their overcoming and that they were made for great things because we were all made in the image of Christ and we are made to do great things. We are made to overcome amazingly great things. So... Um, you were born to do that, so don't get don't get lost in the situation that you're in. God made you to overcome this situation. 100%. So, and I I love what you said. Is God made you for this, man? So you're sitting at home right now, and you're like, time out, Pastor Willie, Pastor Courtney. I'm not great. I don't have greatness in me. Here's the thing: the Bible says that you were made in God's image. Man, God is so great. He's the greatest of all. Right. And if we're made in His image, then He has called us to be like Him, which means He has put greatness inside of us. Right. And if, if God didn't, didn't want you to be great, if God didn't call you to greatness, then why would He have ever made you in His image? Right. And it's, it's simple. God has plans for you 
and, and greatness is part of it. Being an influence is part of it. Uh, and so that's huge. Point three, and I, I love this point. This is probably <laughs> my favorite point of this series, is if you're not dead, you are not done. Right. So if you are not dead, you are not done. 100%. Guess what? God has a plan for you. Right now, he has a plan for you. Are you breathing? <laughs> yes, you are because you're watching this. God has a plan for you. And just because you can't see a way, to, way out of your situation in this moment does not mean that God's plan was thrown to the wayside right. and, and he's just done with you. No, God's plan, like, it's persistent. Right. God's plan has a greater ability than what your mind can comprehend. Now, I want to talk about three guys. Uh, so you guys all know David's my, like, number one, or, <laughs> yeah, number one. He's my favorite. Um, now, there's, like, top three on my book, and technically these are three guys. And so, but I'm just going to say top three in my book, Radjak, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. No, it's Radjak, Meshach, and Abednego. Whatever. It, Courtney's right. He is, she, yes. I'm always right. Can we get Very that on repeat so. over and over? Courtney's right. Courtney's right. Courtney, Courtney's right. Um, so, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three guys were put in a situation that called for greatness in the moment. And if you haven't ever heard the story, I'm going to tell it super quick. So these three guys... Uh, they were taken from their land, and they were under a king called King Nebuchadnezzar. All right, King Nebuchadnezzar and had a dream of a big statue in his image, and he had this big thought of, you know what? I want everybody to worship me. I'm going to build it, and when the trumpet sound, they're all going to bow down. And sure enough, the trumpet sounded, and the whole nation bowed down, to this golden statue, except for three guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Radchak, Meshach, and Abednego. I'm just kidding. These three guys, man, they had greatness. They were an influencer. They were ready to make an impact. And they said, you know what? I serve a God that's greater than some golden statue. Right. I serve a God that's bigger than the situation that I'm in right now. In, in 2 Corinthians 4, 8, and 9, I'm going to read this. We are pressed down on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed and broken. We are perplexed, but we don't give up and quit. We are hunted down, but God never, I'm going to say that again, but God never abandons us. We get knocked down, but we get up again and we keep moving yeah. forward. Man, life is... Man, it can knock you down. Right now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, life's about to knock them down, and they're going to have a, a come-to-Jesus meeting in their head real quick to figure <laughs> out, am I called for, for, for greatness? Am I ready to be the influencer that right. God's called me to be? And, and in the story, the king sees them. They get brought in front of the king, and, the, and they say, and the king goes, you know what? I'll give you one more chance, but if... But if you don't do it, I'm going to throw you into a fiery, 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 a fiery furnace. And, and in fact, the king said, turn up the heat. Right. We're going to make it as hot as it, it'll go. And, and they blew the trumpets again. And in that moment, they were pressed down. Man, they were perplexed. They were in a spot that, that they thought they were knocked down. Right. Man, they thought about giving up. They thought about probably quitting. But they had to remember that God never abandons us. And in the moment, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were three guys versus a nation. And they decided, my influence, the impact that I'm going to have on this nation, yeah. because I'm going to stand up for the one true God, and I'm going to stand up, Speak out and live it. Man, I said the, those three earlier. That stand up, speak out, and live it. They decided to do that. And a nation, well, I can't finish that. We'll talk about that next week. So, 
You're not going to tell them the end of the story? I'm not. Because here's the thing. I, I love cliffhangers. And the reason I love cliffhangers is because it makes them come back. <laughs> I will tell you, most of you guys have probably heard the story. And they decided to stay standing. And that's exactly what they did. And, and because of that, man, they, they were put in a situation. We'll talk about that situation next week. But and imagine the pressure that was on them right. at this moment when they heard the trumpet sound for the second time, when, they, when everyone else that they could see were bowing down to this golden statue. Imagine the, the tidal waves of pressure. Imagine the, the fact of watching your friend fall to their knees. There, there had to be a moment in their life that they said, you know what? i got to make a choice. God will never abandon me. Right. That's my choice is to lean on God. And I think we've all been in a situation where you really have to, like maybe not the same situation, obviously, where you're having to bow down to a statue. But I think we've all been in a situation where we have to decide, like, how am I going to react to this? How am I going to stand up? What is, what is my declaration going to be through my actions or my words right now at this moment? when this situation is happening, yeah. whether it's been at school or in a ball game or whatever, For, be or when you think message, nobody else is around. Like yeah. Or, um, yeah. You so you it. have to make that declaration through your actions, through your words of this is who I am. This is who my, you know, who my God is. This is who God is in me. Yeah. And this is how I'm going to live out what he's called me to do. And yeah. so when you make that choice, when you respond to that situation, you when you respond to that text or that person, whatever, that is your declaration. So what are you saying? Yeah. What are you speaking up? Yeah. What are you standing up for? Right. What are you living for? And what are people, what impact are they getting from you? Because we have to evaluate ourselves as as believers, we have to grow. And part of growth is evaluating, like, what could I do better? You know, even in our jobs, we have, we have evaluations where we look back and reflect, what could we yeah. do better? And as believers, as Christians walking this out, we have to say, what can I do better? You know, how can I love better? How can I um, share who God is in my life better? What, you know, how can I impact better than what I'm doing right now? And we have to look back and be reflective and so, I mean, maybe there's been a point where you're like, eh, I was under pressure and I folded. Like, well, yeah. I blew it. I, I didn't. Man, some, well, sometimes it's so much easier just to take a knee. Right. And it's easier just to be like, all right, I'm going to yeah. I'm gonna fold on this one. But we found a good quote, and I loved it. It says, if you still have breath in your lungs, then you have another chance in your bones. Yeah. You know, God gives us a second chance. And so even if you're sitting here and you're saying, you know what, like I've blown it. Like I've had a chance to stand up for what's right. I've had a chance to make the right decision and I haven't done it. Well, you know what, it's not too late. But when you have a relationship with God to the point that God is so real that you know that you know, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew without a shadow of a doubt that God will not abandon us. And you have that foundation in your relationship with God that you can stand on when the pressure is on, that, that is how you withstand those high pressure trials Absolutely. and so like if that's something that you're saying you know i don't have that because i've, I've never asked christ to live in my heart that's something we want to give you the opportunity to do yeah. because life can sometimes knock you flat on your butt yeah <laughs> i mean for real and yeah. the pressure is hard and it's a lot and even though you want to make that stand when you don't know that you know that god will not let you fail because you yeah. haven't spent that time with him and building that foundation in a relationship with him it's hard. It's harder. Yeah. And so if that's you and you want to accept Christ into your life today, we want to pray with you. And so if you'll just bow your heads and pray along with us, it's super easy. And you can't ever do anything that makes God not want to have a relationship with you. Yeah. He loves you and he wants to have a relationship with you. So if that's you, pray with us today. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Thank you so much for your sacrifice. Thank you so much for your sacrifice. Come live in my heart. Come live in my heart. Help me walk in your love. Help me walk in your love. Help me to love others the way that you do. Help me love others the way you do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For your sacrifice. For your sacrifice. In your name. In your name. Amen. Amen. Man, and, and if you're out there and you're like, you know what, I, God is number one in my life, but, but I've taken a knee a couple times right. and, I, and I've forgotten 
who I was in Christ and, or what I'm called to and do. what I'm called to do, but, but you're ready to make that choice, man, I want to pray over you. Um, because And it takes boldness. Mm -hmm. It takes that greatness inside of you. Yeah. Uh, are you going to be perfect? No. Pastor Court and I, we are not perfect. Right. By any means, we're not perfect. But here's the thing. God didn't call you to be perfect. He called you to pro put forth perfect effort. Right. He wants that relationship. Well, he in 2 Corinthians that. it says, we get knocked down, but we get up again yeah. and keep moving forward. Yeah. Get up, dust it off, spend time with God, and move forward. Uh, I want to pray over you guys. Jesus, we love you, God. I thank you for every one of these students out there. That, that man, They love you with all of their heart, but they've taken a knee and they've been knocked down. God, I pray for boldness and strength to stand back up. And, and be the influence and be the impact and, and call forth that greatness inside of them to lead others to you, to use their story as their witness tool. God, we thank you so much for each student. God, we thank you that, that, that you live inside of them and you give them strength and boldness. God, we love you in your name. Amen. Amen. Hey. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. Yeah. If, if you ask Christ into your life or if there's anything that you need us to pray with you about, like shoot us a message, yeah. shoot, shoot us a Snapchat, something. Let us know if you accepted Christ in your life. We want to help you get started on that path, on that relationship of what's next and how to get connected with other believers. If you need prayer, though, we're here. Small group leaders are here. We want to pray with you, surround you with love, lift you up. And we have a change this week. There is a big change this week. We normally do Zoom on Thursdays, but we're stopping that and we're doing it on Wednesdays at 8.15. So, so just Zoom a little bit is literally in what 30 minutes maybe yeah. maybe that so yeah. don't forget wednesday nights wednesday 8 15, nights, 8 15. so literally get off here go take a pee pee break and get back on your zoom and uh get ready to hang out with us and have a chance to win gift cards stuff like that so can't wait to see you guys in just like a little bit a little bit see ya peace out